what is a, a pleasant, super good evening reaching out to everyone. Um, just I seriously really need to take care of myself, man, in this quarantine mode, but I'm so paranoid. I'm so paranoid about actually, you know, getting myself taken care of. Hey, how you doing? That guy was still, <laughs> that guy was still there this morning, man. That's my neighbor. No, 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 no. That, that, the guy you saw this morning was the workers. That's my neighbor. All right. All right. So, yeah. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is where I speak with the attorneys here on the show. I want to say a super pleasant good evening reaching out to each and every one. And uh, this morning's show, a record show, we have over 2,600 people that actually watch that show. And, of course, here we are again, cruising with the case handler a show on personal injury and immigration law. And we are going to be speaking extensively. Adam Hanley, how are you everyone. feeling, man? How are you feeling? I'm great, man. I'm great. I'm still uh, still buzzing from this morning's show. We had such a sick response. I mean, that is so awesome. We had, uh, at any given time, you know, 60, maybe even 70 people watching. Uh, almost yeah. 3,000 people have viewed uh, this morning's show already on Facebook. You know, we were live on 93.5 FM. A lot of people don't realize that, you know, right now we're just exclusively uh, on Facebook, but a lot of people don't realize that uh, in the morning, we're, we're also live on 93.5 FM. Uh, that's a radio station that Squeeze has been on. W when did you start 93.5? 1996. Yeah. I, that was from your your Bronx, your White Plains Road uh, office. Hey, why? Well, yeah, you know it. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>. sir. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, before I had grades. Yeah, not, no grades. You had the dreadlocks, though. <laughs> yes, um, I had the grades. The, the ninety-three point five uh, radio station. You know, Squeeze and I have been doing together uh, since two thousand and four, right? Uh, you know, breaks here and there and, you know, but we came full circle, came to our senses maybe and decided to go with what really works and go with a combination uh, of talent, uh, information, uh, good humor, but most importantly, goodwill. Uh, and that's what we're promoting here at Pollock Pollock Isaac DeSico. We've been promoting it since uh, the pandemic hit. Uh, I mean, we we always are, are the same firm, but as far as promoting on the radio and promoting All right, you're good media. to go. Call me if you need any help, okay? Thank you. Okay, bye. Uh, we, uh, we've been just letting people know out there, letting people out there know that, you know, we are a law firm that cares and is looking to give back. And the first thing Conrad said to me when we decided to bring the immigration on to the Cruising with the Case Center show is uh, it was very important for uh, the listeners out there to, to really understand you know, what our motivation is. And our motivation truly is helping those in need, helping those uh, who really want to make a difference for themselves and their families here in the United States, uh, United States of America, legitimizing their status. And to that end, we are, have been offering and will continue to offer for the foreseeable future 100% free immigration consultation. Well, actually, free consultations across the board, personal injury, immigration, criminal defense, matrimonial, real estate, and employment law. We are a full service law firm. We are Pollock Pollock Isaac DeSico. I am your boy, Adam Handler, the case handler, and you now are officially cruising with the case handler. It's the afternoon cruise. In the mornings, we do the morning cruise. The afternoons, we do the afternoon cruise. And we're here to let you know that there's a law firm that's really making a difference and doing things much differently than other attorneys out there. We are practicing attorneys. We can't stress that enough. We all handle our own cases. We all handle your case. We actually go to court. We are practicing attorneys, all right? Uh, and uh, we have been doing this strong for, well, I haven't been, but the firm has been doing it strong for almost 60 years. Uh, Conrad's been you know, spearheading the firm that his father uh, uh started uh, back in the late 60s and uh, we've been doing some great things or as uh, a lot of those 93.5 viewers uh, listeners would say great things man great things so we're here to help we want to help again our phone number is 844-774-3529 or 844-PPID-LAW um, 
And uh, I'd love to open it up to some immigration questions. I know <clears throat> that we were off to a roll this morning and, and cut it a little short just because we knew that we had the afternoon show. And Alan Kay, of course, is here, the general, uh, no man more experienced, no man more respected, no man more seasoned than Alan Kay um, anywhere uh, within hundreds of miles of where we're all sitting right now. So thank you, Alan, for all the work you've done. And thank you for being on the show today. Any immigration, any important immigration news you want to share with all these people, Alan? Before, yeah. before, before Alan jumps in, I, I just want to do something, seeing that we're exclusively on Facebook right here. I need for everyone, I'll, I'll just take 60 seconds to do this, Adam, because I know you got to go a little bit early today. And then I'm with the real men. Dead air. I'm just, I'm just messing with you, man. All right. Um, yeah. Uh, I just want to say to it, to everyone, uh, please do us a favor and share the show. As, as Alan said, we had a record, Adam said, we had a record show this morning and I would like for us to do the same here in the evening. It's um, imperative to us anyway, that you share the show with friends, families, and even foes. Okay, who would like to have immigration questions answered or have good attorneys on their side in the capacity of personal injury, criminal defense, real estate, law, and more. Although the prevalence here is personal injury and immigration, we would like them to actually store that number that Adam mentioned, the case handler, the shark. That's what we call him because he has settled well over $120 million for his clients. Um, the number is 844-774-3529. However, if you're watching this, there's that little share button down at the uh, bottom of the uh, your, your uh, screen that you're watching, just click on share. And then you can actually share it on pages and groups. You can share it on timelines. And I need, like I said this morning, I need for everyone to share it on at least 10 people's page. This morning it worked. Share it on at least 10 people's page, get the information out. And the reason why I need that, it's not that we could not be doing dinner now. It's because there's so much going on in this country, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to immigration, there are so many changes that is truly, truly screwed up and effed up, if I may say so. And we wanna make sure that people, I'm that upset that I have to use that, that F word, I'm not saying it out, but it's, it's, it's very important that we have attorneys who can answer these questions that will pop up if you are seeking immigration benefits. And I'm very happy that I have the best team ever that I've ever had ever since doing a talk show of this capacity, the best team. And I say that without any apology. They are very good. <clears throat> and what I like about the team for the first time in the history since I've been doing radio since 1996, as you share, is that we actually have, you know, and, and I'm not even supposed to use this word specialization, but once again, I'm the broadcaster. Each of them have, have their own specialization and they bounce things off of each other. As Nelson and Conrad would say, and, and, and the general would say, they bounce things off of each other, the yees. These attorneys, they know what, they are doing. The other thing I also like is that they will not take a case if they know they can't help you. I have been and seen work with attorneys in the past who said, well, let me see if I can work on your case. No, that's not the case here when it comes to cruising with a case handler and PPID. So please share what it is that we're watching now and let's help other people. As I change my name from Kevin Crown to David Anarchy. all right? All right, so gentlemen, you can jump in, Conrad. Yeah, we, I, I, we were going to Alan for some important yeah, immigration. I'm sorry, yeah. Okay. Alan. I was on the phone for two hours today of talking to different people about immigration. So let me give you some news. Alan, just move a little bit closer to your computer so the microphone picks you up a little bit better, buddy. Got it. Let me give you some news. Uh, they're going to be picking up on sending notices out for naturalization ceremonies. Uh, they'll fo first send out notices for people who had a ceremony that was postponed, then they will follow after that with people who didn't have a ceremony yet a swearing in. Now, no guests will be permitted. You're just gonna have to come by yourself. Everybody has to wear a mask. You have to bring your own pen, blue or black. They, they don't wanna get involved with pens that could have virus on it. By the end of July, they're hoping to have finished the naturalization cases, but 110,000 people were waiting for their naturalization cases to be to be sworn in. They're down to 65,000 now, but I really can't see how they're gonna do 65,000 cases by the end of July when they're doing all kinds of social distancing and taking not a lot of people and no guests. So that, let's see how that works out. Secondly, 
immigration has been, USCIS has been losing money and they have a revenue shortfall and they have served the notice that they may have to furlough people. Now, if they're gonna furlough, they will furlough 13,400 people out of 18,000 people. And that would begin August 3rd. So they have to give a 30 day notice if they're gonna really, really be furloughing people. But if there are, there's gonna be a hell of a backlog of cases when they come back from furlough. So that's something to keep an on, on eye on. Hopefully they'll come up with the money and they won't have to furlough 13,000 people out of 18,000 people because there's gonna be havoc with immigration cases. So that's some of the um, updates because I was on the phone for two on two different calls for two hours getting this kind of information. One of the calls- well, Alan, isn't one of, excuse me, isn't one of the ways that they're dealing with the shortfall is that they're raising user fees? I thought the fees are supposed to be going up like any day now. I don't think that's going to make a difference. I mean, even though we don't know when the fees are going to go up, but that's not going to be enough to give them the money so that they won't have to furlough people. So mm -hmm. even though they may want yeah, to raise the fees, raising the fees take time, they have to serve a notice, people have to comment. So I don't think that's going to help. Mm -hmm. so if they furlough, it's going to make hell with at the backlogs that they already have because they were closed down. Mm -hmm. All right. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, that's Alan. E.K., attorney at law, the general, we call him. Man's got so much information, it's unbelievable, all right? So once again, do remember that you can place your questions here on Facebook. We've got a question already. We're going to jump right into it. Um, Adam Handler, you want to say anything on the personal injury side before we jump into immigration, seeing that you're hopping off a little yeah. bit early? Yeah, I, um, I just wanted to reiterate that we had a, a great day yesterday. Uh, we talked about it in the morning. We had a $550,000 settlement uh, for a gentleman, an out of status immigrant with no social security number. And he's coming into $550,000, uh, a huge settlement yesterday. Uh, couldn't be prouder. And, uh, you know, we, we negotiated tough yesterday. You know, like I said, uh, they, they, they had a final and best offer of a quarter million. And I'm sure there's a lot, he, my client wanted to take it. And I'm sure there's a lot of attorneys that would have wanted to take that too, especially these days, not even knowing when, if, and when uh, the end of the case will ever come, you know, the courts really, they're, they're, they're starting to operate, but they're still, it's, it's a skeleton crew and no, no true chance uh, of a jury trial anytime this year, certainly. So, you know, $250,000 or $300,000 or $400,000 waved in front of a, a client or an attorney may seem very, uh, very uh, appetizing, but you know we certainly understand here at Paul's Paul Casico that you got one chance to get it right, one chance for maximum compensation for your injury, for your time out of work, and your medical bills. And we knew that this case was worth more than two hundred fifty thousand, and uh, we did settle for five hundred fifty thousand. It's a, a true life success story. Uh, it will be a testimonial Tuesday one day. And, uh, you know, we couldn't be happier to be able to get such an amazing recovery, especially uh, during times like this, where it just seems impossible uh, to exercise, uh, you know, your right uh, for justice, whether it's in the personal injury world or the immigration world or the family court uh, arena. You know, it seems like all the cards are stacked against you right now, especially uh, if you're an immigrant and particularly if you're an out-of-status immigrant. But some recent changes in the law, uh, thankfully here in the Southern District of New York have allowed those immigrants now to come forward for it without fear of being picked up by ICE and deportation. So, you know, the good guys are winning and we're doing it the right way and we're helping human beings. And that's the most important thing that we can stress. And that's certainly something that we as a firm are really proud of. Humans helping humans. 844-774-3529 or 844-PP. ID law. My name is Adam Handler. I am your case handler. And I can't wait to hear what the immigration crew has to say uh, this evening about what's going on with some of those questions. And, and the key here, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I know you may not need Adam right this second. But if you're in the New York or New Jersey area, you really need to store his number, dial it, let it ring about 15, 20 seconds. So this way he has your number also, he'll store it. And you can store his. The number once again is 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. I want to say thanks to each and every one out there for tuning in. We will continue the show now. 
okay, for a few minutes here. Um, and let's go to um, a question here. Let's throw an immigration question out there. Um, Chris wants to know, he says, we are, the, we are F3 category and, and documentary qualified since 27th of November, 2019. And our PD is current and we are waiting for the interview to be scheduled. The last proclamation has banned immigrant visas, but I read in the proclamation that we may classify as a waiver. If we want to visit our family member, if he is in life or death situation, if so, can we qualify as a waiver? You're mixing up, he's mixing up about three different things. First of all, if he's been in the United States out of status for more than six months and he goes home, he's going to be barred for three years and coming back and he'll need a waiver. If he's been out of status more than a year, he'll, he's got 10 years unless he gets a waiver. So a waiver is one thing. A waiver is not going to give him permission to travel and come back. Secondly, um, and if, if he didn't look at this yet and he's just doing this all by himself and he goes home when they finally open up the consulate and call him for an interview and they're going to say, where's your waiver? And he's going to say, what waiver? So he should see somebody at PPRD to look at the case and see if he needs a waiver and to see if we can help him get a waiver. But he doesn't want to leave until the waiver is ready. So there are a number of problems in this case, but a waiver is not a permission to travel and come back. You really want to look at the waiver and have one of us look at it and see if we can help him to do the waiver for him because the waiver is a long and complicated process. Nelson, you want to add anything? Well, I, is the gentleman here in the United States or is he abroad? Um, Chris, I know you're actually watching this right now. So if you can actually respond to what the attorneys are asking, you know, um, where are you exactly? So this way, they if, can... if, if he's in the United States and he wants to travel abroad, he's going to need permission to do that. He's going to need advanced parole. Um, now, you oh, know, he, said he has never been in the United States. OK, so he's in Jamaica. OK, so he's okay. in Jamaica and he wants to come to the United States. He's abroad, yeah. But he's, uh, he's the beneficiary of a third pref. His parents, he's married and he's, his parents applied for him. Somebody's a U.S. citizen who applied for him. And he's trying to come to the United States with a green card. He's banned. He's subject to the ban. There's an immigrant visa ban it, that. Oh, no, he's in Albania. Right. He's still Whatever. subject to the ban. Wherever he is, he's still subject to the ban. Right. Until the, until the end of the year, Trump has put in an immigrant visa ban. So he's not coming here before that. Anyway. And, and, I, and I don't believe he's subject, he's eligible for any kind of waiver around that ban. I, I, I don't see it. Right. Right. There's no, no waiver. I mean, if someone, if someone has died, God forbid, in his family or is gravely ill, mm -hmm. I guess he could try to request humanitarian parole. Although I'm not sure that would, uh, again, in this climate that we're in, I'm not sure how successful that would be. Not going to be easy. It's not going to happen. Parole, parole is meant for somebody who's leaving, who's coming, he's not coming permanently. You know, he's coming here permanently. If he, I mean, if that were the case, they just let him come. Right. You know? So squeeze. That's that's another issue that he has. Um, because there is a pending visa on his behalf. Yeah. You know, the question becomes whether or not he plans to use that as an excuse to enter and remain in the United States. Right. And again, we're in a very um, difficult uh, climate right. where there's a lot of animus towards all immigrants. Mm -hmm. So it will be very difficult for him to come to the United States. The best thing he is that just needs to sit, he needs to sit tight and just keep when the consulate opens, tell them that he's ready whenever they are. And he's hopefully going to be able to come in after that ban is lifted after Trump loses in November. Right. Right. So once again, um, everyone that's watching Fingers here, crossed. Um, <laughs> there you have it. The depth of the attorneys here, close to a century of experience hanging out with me right here. <laughs> close to a century 100 years thank you so much for that update nelson yeah uh, you know but it's definitely true all right so once again ladies and gentlemen we're here answering um your immigration questions all right um it's going to be short-lived this today all right i think my power is actually even dying okay someone says here can i use my i-765 notice to get my driver's license please let me know yes oh you can okay yes all right. And um, you could also use it to get a social security card if it didn't already come with the 
an I-765 is an employment authorization. Okay. OK, employment authorization allows you to obviously remain in the United States while your case is pending as well as work with the employment authorization. Um, sometimes it's possible to obtain a well, not sometimes it's possible to obtain a Social Security card as well as a driver's license. It would so, probably, probably be a good idea to check with the Motor Vehicle Bureau to see what they want to see and whether the employment authorization is enough or whether they want to see something else too. Right. I guess it all depends on your home state. In New York and New Jersey, it would not be an issue. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Now, once again, folks, just want to remind you that the number to call is 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Um, can you guys just expound a little bit on the band? Because I think a lot of people are getting it confused with all the questions coming on the band. Can you guys, can one of you just expand a little bit as to what the band truly is and who it really well, is? Well, there, there have been two bans issued. The first one that the president issued, the first proclamation was in April. Um, that ban effectively uh, prevents most people from getting their green cards. There are a couple of exceptions. Uh, if you're married to a U.S. citizen or if you're, if you're the unmarried child under 21 of a U.S. citizen, uh, you're not subject to the ban, even if you're outside the United States. But uh, that ban basically applies to every person outside the United States who's applying for a green card, other than those exceptions I just mentioned. Again, there are a couple of others, EB-5, a couple other, if you're involved in it uh, as a healthcare worker and so on. But that, that's pretty much the ban that took place in April. The ban that was just issued this past week, it extended that ban beyond just people that are applying for green cards. Uh, to temporary workers, H-1B, H-2B, J-1, and L-1. Uh, those are the four categories of temporary workers, each of them different, each different qualifications that are necessary to get them and to apply for them. Um, but each of those four categories have been also banned from coming to the United States if they're outside the United States. There are exceptions. If you're in the United States and you have a... If, actually, if you're in the United States on any kind of visa, you can change your status. You can't leave but you can change your status and possibly change to a J-1 if you're here. Um, or if you're, in, if you're outside the United States with a valid visa, you can come back. Uh, but anybody outside the United States trying to apply for a new visa like that is not going to get it. Um, again, there are a couple of minor exceptions, pretty much what I just mentioned. Uh, but that's it basically for the rest of the year. There are alternatives. You know, There's an E-2, E-1 visa that's out there. Uh, Australians can apply for E-3s. Canadians, Mexicans can apply for TNs, um, but the options are pretty, limit, li pretty limited. Also, O-1 is a, is a visa available for professionals um, or entertainers or artists, um, but the H-1, the H-2B, the J-1, the L-1, those, I, I, I don't know the numbers offhand, but in terms of the number, the, the workers that come into the United States every year as, as temporary workers, I, I would venture to say that those four categories cover more than 50% of the, of the temporary workers that come in. So it's a pretty big hit. Well, so we've got Alan, two, anything to add? We've got two bans. The first ban, as Conrad explained, is an immigrant visa ban, which came out in April. The latest ban, which just came out now, is a non-immigrant visa ban. As Conrad explained, it covers certain categories. So two different bans, one for immigrant visas, and one for coming, people coming on temporary visas. You know, it is possible. There, we're hearing talk. The American Immigration Lawyers Association, uh, in conjunction with some or other organizations, some companies that are not happy about this latest ban, there is talk of a lawsuit. Uh, and I'm sure, Alan, you probably know more about this than I do. But there's a lawsuit coming. I'm sure in federal court that they're going to try to put a stop to this. They're going to try to get a, at least a restraining order to delay it from taking effect. Um, but it hasn't happened yet, but we're optimistic it's going to happen soon. You know, I was, I was also, I'm sorry to, to interject. I was also on a, on a webinar today. They're basically trying to gut the asylum, the asylum process. You know, there are now proposed regulations. Uh, Conrad, I haven't had a chance to discuss this with you yet, but this is really interesting. So if you're flying into the United States and you stop and you make a, a, a stop in a country, for about an hour, you're disqualified because you were supposed to, I guess, go from the airport and seek asylum. Um, if you're flying in to the United States and you make two stops, 
you're disqualified from filing for asylum. If you're unlawfully present in the United States for a year, you're ineligible and they will pretermit your asylum application. If you don't pay taxes, they are also looking to disqualify you from applying for asylum in the United States. And these are just some, some of the many proposed changes. But, you know, today, squeeze, I just saw your facial expression, you know, and, and you're not a, today, you know, I guess reality sunk in. And I was like, is this real? Like, is this really happening? You know, I, I, I'm, I'm probably more stunned than you are because I've been doing this for 13 years. You know, and um, they were talking about the history, you know, they were talking about on this webinar, they were talking about the statute of liberty. You know, it's pretty much what we quote unquote stand for as a country, you know, but obviously times have changed. Obviously the climate has changed, you know, and, and it's sad. It's sad that we are where we find ourselves, but it, no, it, it, go ahead. Go ahead no, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, it's just, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm stunned. I mean, well, I just you know, can't picking, believe it. Pick, picking up on what you're saying, you know, it's interesting. I was just reading something about a, an article which I thought was uh, kind of ironic. You know, when Trump came into power uh, three and a half years ago, what's the first thing he did? The first day, I believe, that he was in office? Muslim ban. Let's try to get them. Let's keep the Muslims out. They're dangerous. They're, they're, they're going to sh sh Sharia law is terrible. And we got to keep the Muslims out. They're all terrorists and and just like the Mexicans were all rapists and so on. But anyway, the first thing that he did was Muslim ban. Um, keep the Muslims out. And now he's trying to keep everybody else out. And meanwhile, while this is all going on, here's the European Union that's about to ban Americans. <laughs> that, uh, the, <laughs> that Americans are going to be barred from coming, to, coming into any of the European uh, Union countries. I just thought that was kind of ironic that here we are three and a half year, years later, how things have come full circle. You know, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> I was on the same call that Nelson was on, and they're going to kill the asylum system. Um, with those things go go through, hardly anybody is going to be able to qualify for asylum. Yeah. It's just terrible. Yeah. Well, they're already. I believe they've already put an end to the refugees. I mean, I, I usually. I mean, every yes. year there's a number of refugees that come in, but Trump, I, I think he there hasn't been any refugees coming it's, this year. It's usually, actually usually at least ten, twenty thousand. This year, what are you at? Ten, twenty. It's yeah. actually funny you say that because they they spoke about that as well. I think under the Obama administration, you had what was it, Alan, seven thousand or something, or seventy thousand, and now with Trump, I think they said it was like a hundred. Yeah, so it's, it's gone way, 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 way down under Trump. People coming but, in. But this is this is, you know, as sad as it is, it's just it's the climate that we're in, you know, where they they almost foster this, you know, and you can't read a news publication without hearing, you know, I was I was reading something and um, there was a video of some woman, you know, uh, degrading another woman and the other woman slapped her because she made a racist remark and it's apparently become the new normal, which is even more disturbing. You know, I mean, it's out in the open. It's just, it is what it is. You know, as you said, Conrad, the Muslim ban, the Central American ban, right? Because asylum, they're, they're targeting really Central America now, yep. you know, and a lot of other people fleeing their countries for many, many reasons. So um, basically these proposed changes will pretty much decimate the asylum process. Well, and, and beyond that, you know, I mean, just this ban on, on temporary workers, on people with green cards. I mean, they're keeping out all pairs, for instance. <laughs> J1, typically all pairs that come in, nannies, housekeepers, uh, well, babysitters. They all come in from different countries all around the world. They come for a year, two years, a year and a half, whatever it is on J1. They're banned, right? Under the pretext that they're taking jobs away from American workers. H2Bs, I mean, our firm processes a number of H2Bs for landscapers in the Northeast uh, area of the United States. Landscapers, guys cutting your lawn, uh, guys planting your trees, guys plant, you know, mowing your grass. These guys are typically coming from Mexico, they're coming from Guatemala. Uh, same thing, H2Bs, uh, Jamaicans. I can't tell you how many apple pickers have come from Jamaica over the last couple of decades. These are all H2Bs and all of these guys and women banned. 
All right. Conrad, Again, if, under, the pre, under the pre, let me finish my thought. Under the pretext that these people are taking jobs away from American workers, I don't know about you, but I don't see that many people in my neighborhood that a local. All right, that look like they were born in the United States that are cutting lawns. I don't see it. I don't see a lot of our pairs that uh, look like they were born in the United States. I, I don't see a lot of guys picking strawberries or picking apples or, or planting planting broccoli in California or what have you, all right, that look like they were born in the United States. And it's just, it, it is so self-defeating. It's just absolute craziness Lunacy. if i could if i could Lunacy. add th these are seasonal phone workers number, the phone number now so if you don't like sure then... phone number is 844-774-3529 that is 844-774-3529 but just to add to what conrad said these are seasonal workers mm -hmm. these are people who have been coming into the united states for a few months and then go back they, they don't even live here they go back home yeah. You know, so I can't tell you, speaking to those people, the H2Bs, the employers, these landscape companies, these guys, these companies, and I've been doing H2Bs now throughout the metropolitan area for, I don't know, 20 something years. All of them are dying. They can't find people to do their work. So what do they do? They don't take the work. They don't make the money. They lay off their other workers. It's just, it's a vicious circle. And even, even our, our president, Mar-a-Lago is usually good for four or 5,000 H2Bs every year, right? I don't know what he's going to do, probably hire the legals, you know, but I don't know what he's going to do uh, without the H2B program because Mar-a-Lago is going to have a problem finding workers, although, of course, you know, people are going to want to work there because it's Mar-a-Lago, right? But he hires four to 5,000 of them a year himself. Right? It's just absolute lunacy. Crazy. People, people have been coming in from Jamaica to pick apples in the Northeast for years and years and years. And decades. That's... Decades. Well, yeah. there's also a lot of Jamaican yeah. all pairs. Yeah. All, it, all of these it's categories. Very, it's just, it's just yeah. very sad. And um, we got Denisha here, you know, saying, I am an F2A category and separated from my family, like a lot of others. And it's so heartbreaking. And the thing is, it's like your back is against the wall. I thought the president was supposed to enforce laws that changed him. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, that so, was, he's, hey, he's a, look, one thing he's good at, he's a con man, right? He's very good at conning people. So, yeah. here you go. Here's, here's Raquel also saying, yes, I have benefited as a J1. I work at Six Flags in Atlanta one year, then in the Hamptons the other. You know, very unfair, you know? And, and now those places where she worked, I guarantee you those places right now, or at least when they open, they're going to be suffering big time. It's not going to be able to find people to do that job. Well, right. The ban, the ban applies to J-1 visas. Yeah. Yeah, so they're all parents. You, right. Yeah. J-1, among, among other types of non-immigrant visas, J-1 is uh, going to be affected by Trump's latest ban. And L's and H's, uh, H-1s, H-2s, they're all going to be affected yeah, it's, it's, by the latest ban. It's crazy. All right, let me just crazy. squeeze in before we wrap up, guys. All right, because I know we all got a lot to do. Um, um, Raquel is also following and saying, hi, guys. I'm following up on a question I asked this morning regarding traveling on my B1, B2 to visit my husband. Now, if I'm not allowed to enter, will I be banned and sent to my home country? If so, how long is the ban? I visited last February. No, if you're no she has a B1, B2. She's not subject. Good. Right. She's okay. Right. The only question is whether you have a problem getting in at the airport because if they see that you have an immigrant visa petition pending um, and see well, no, no, Alan, I think it's the reverse. I think she applied for a husband. Her husband's outside the country, okay. I think. I mean, I'm, I'm I, actually, I don't know. Maybe I'm mistaken. Maybe I'm mistaken. Fact is, though, if you have it, tourist no, no, visas, no, no. She's, she's, she's visiting her visas, tourist visas. She's traveling on her B1, B2 to visit her husband. Yeah, well, that's what I was okay. saying. And, 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 and also, right, right, she's then. saying that she was she visited last February. I think what she's asking, and I'm speculating here, is that she came in February and she's going to come again. I yeah. mean, they may not Don't. let her in, you know? Don't. She, Give it some time. I wouldn't come right back. I don't know how long she was here, but she was here in February. I'm sure she was here at least for a couple of months. I wouldn't come back that quickly. 
I'm assuming you know, she has a multiple entry she, tourist visa Jamaica, to yeah. come to the U.S., but I wouldn't yeah. come back anytime soon. Give it at least six months from the last entry year. Yeah, yeah. Right. Just, with and she's in Jamaica. Yeah. Just, just to add to that, you know, anytime you you seek admission or you're trying to come into the United States, it's discretionary. So to uh, expand upon what Conrad was saying, you know, if they see that she's come in quite frequently, they're going to think she's working, and they could literally right. rip up her visa and cancel it. So it's something you want to be careful about. It could also affect her application for a green card down the road. Right. All right. So be careful. And, and Raquel, if you want more information, feel, feel free to call the firm, 844-774-3529. Love the engagements that's, that's happening here on Facebook. I want to say thanks to you. Yeah, David, one, one, more, one more comment to Raquel. Um, well, I mean, then this, you know, this is just between you and me, Raquel. Uh, <laughs> um, when your priority date is close to being current, F2A, if you're in the United States, if you enter the United States and you're in lawful status and that F2A becomes current, you can adjust status. That is the way for you to avoid that travel ban. If you're in the United States in lawful status and that F2A priority date is current, you can apply for adjustment of status here, ban or no ban. And, and right now the F2 category F2A is current for June and July. Okay, all right, no problem. All right. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much. Do remember to share this. Although the show is ending now, do remember to share this with as many people as possible. It will be up on the Facebook pages that you are watching. Also, do remember that we come your way each and every single weekday morning at 8.30, 8.30 a.m. here in the New York Tri-State area on 93.5 WVIP-FM and also on Facebook. And on Saturdays between 6 and eight, we go hard, okay, with pushing the number and pushing the services of the firm. Also on Sundays between 12 and 2 p.m. We do appreciate you. And I am also speaking on behalf of the gentleman here on the panel and the wonderful law firm that is extending free immigration consultation. So if you'd like to get that free immigration consultation off the air, privately and confidentially, dial this number 844 844- Seven seven four three five two nine. That's eight four four seven seven four three five two nine. Gentlemen, it's been great. It's been a blessing. I want to say thanks to each and every one of you for taking some time out of your evening to actually do this for the viewers. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. Our pleasure. Yeah, prior results do not guarantee a similar outcome, but we know we should be down with PPID.